Prophet Lut salam, was born and raised under the guidance of his esteemed uncle, Prophet Ibrahim salam. Little did he know that his destiny would lead him to a city named Sodom, situated between the modern lands of Jordan and Palestine on the north end of the Dead Sea. Once a bustling commercial hub, Sodom became a breeding ground for wickedness where the very essence of humanity was tainted by ignorance, criminality, mischief, and injustice. However, the most horrendous of their sins was the introduction of homosexuality, an act unheard of in history of mankind until the people of Sodom embraced it. Prophet Lut salam tirelessly preached a message of righteousness for many years, but not a single soul in Sodom accepted his guidance. Faced with constant threats and hostility, he continued to make constant dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, while the people of the city mocked him and vowed to drive him out. أَإِنَّكُمْ لَتَأْتُونَ الرِّجَالَ وَتَقْطَعُونَ السَّبِيلَ وَتَأْتُونَ فِي نَادِيكُمُ الْمُنْكَرُ فَمَا كَانَ جَوَابَ قَوْمِهِ إِلَّا أَنْ قَالُوا اُتِنَا بِعَذَابِ اللَّهِ إِنْ كُنْتَ مِنَ الصَّادِقِينَ قَالَ رَبِّ انْصُرْنِي عَلَى الْقَوْمِ الْمُفْسِدِينَ one day, three angels disguised as men visited the Prophet Lut. His wife betrayed his trust and informed the city's men of their presence, which led them to try and forcefully enter into the home of Prophet Lut. The angels struck the aggressors, causing them to lose their sight. The enraged city blamed Prophet Lut and vowed to attack at dawn. The angels then said to Prophet Lut, Leave with your family during the dark of the night and don't look back. Except for your wife, as she is one of them, they will be dealt with in the morning. As dawn broke, a deafening cry echoed through the city of Sodom, shaking its inhabitants with pain and fear. <laughs> Prophet Lut, having left the accursed city, reunited with his uncle Prophet Ibrahim. Together they continued to spread the divine message until Prophet Lut's last breath. So, 25 minutes till we reach the Dead Sea. We're gonna get there. Perfect timing for the sunset. The Dead Sea is the lowest point on earth. So this whole time we're just driving downhill. I just have it on manual. There's the year. And we're just cruising downhill. And what do you say, Pablos? We're almost there. Vamos, vamos. Vamos. <laughs> Can't wait. All right, so we have arrived at the Dead Sea. We got shower, we got parking, we got a sit down area. We got a cup. We got a cup of Dead Sea mud, just like that. And now we're just gonna head down to the Dead Sea, bust a little swim, and then uh, we're on our way, but uh, check it out. The Dead Sea, or what it's called in Arabic, al bahr al Mait, isn't just any body of water. It's a unique spectacle on our planet. Situated over 400 meters below sea level, it claims the title of the lowest point on Earth. The Jordan River is its sole tributary, and its waters are renowned for being nearly 10 times saltier than the vast oceans. This high salinity creates a bizarre phenomenon, an environment so dense that your body effortlessly floats, as if defying gravity itself. But the allure of the Dead Sea isn't limited to its geographical marvels. Its history 
centuries intertwined with the stories of ancient civilizations that once thrived along its shores. The Nabataeans, Egyptians, Israelites, Romans, and Byzantines all recognized the value of the sea's minerals and resources, harvesting them for centuries. But the Dead Sea isn't just a geological marvel. It holds a profound place in Islamic history. This mystical expanse is intricately linked to the story of Prophet Lut and the ancient city of Sodom, a place marred by wickedness and corruption faced a devastating and intriguing punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yet the question lingers, are there any clues that can complement this powerful story mentioned in the Quran? From what I found while I was there, the echoes of the past may still resonate deep below the shimmering waters of the Dead Sea. They don't call it the Dead Sea for nothing. Because this place is dead. It looks like Really, it looks like uh, Mars or something. It's a lot of salt. There's a lot of salt crystals on the ground. I wonder if they got fish. Oh, look at this. We made it. We made it. Like you are in the sky. No, there's nothing that can survive in this. Mmm. Nothing you think first. Yo, that is salty, like, like salty to the point to where it, it burns, like it's that salty. Wow, you don't want to swallow this, I'll tell you that. You do not want to swallow this. All right, let's jump in. All right, here we go. Into the Dead Sea we go. Look at that. in here now Pablo is making his way in yes Pablo vamonos <laughs> all right I'm going in it's very thick oh, oh, no. oh, this is so weird yo I'm actually floating no way like i'm actually like this is like anti anti-gravity basically like i'm standing like my foot is not on the ground like straight up floating that's crazy i'm so impressed i'm so amazed Okay, this is me trying to go down, ready? <laughs> That's so funny. Ready? You just pop back up. That's it. My foot is not touching the ground. <laughs> oh, it's crazy. Alright, let me duck my head. Maybe it'll help my hair grow back. Good idea. What? My eyes. Oh, no. oh, I need water. Actually, I can't open my eyes. Which way is the shore? This way? Yeah. Oh, I just cried out. Oh. Don't do that. Do not do that. So, this is the uh, Dead Sea. Dead Sea mud. The Quran provides intricate details about the punishment unleashed upon the people of Sodom. It intriguingly mentions, We turn the cities upside down and rain down on them clustered stones of baked clay. Now here's where it gets fascinating. Modern scientists have uncovered a series of mud volcanoes near the Dead Sea known as the Atrium Foundation or Model Zone. Throughout history, there's evidence of eruptions from shallow aquifers resulting in explosive blowouts from much deeper. Could these mud volcanoes which spew out hot mud and hard 
hard stones layer upon layer be the very mechanism behind the punishment mentioned in the Quran? Imagine the earth's wrath unleashed through these natural vents covering the people of Prophet Lut until they were completely destroyed. Considering the geological context of the region, it becomes plausible to imagine the mud and stones mentioned in the Quran as the same therapeutic clay harvested from the depths of the Dead Sea. When I visited the Dead Sea, they handed us a cup of this mud for therapeutic purposes, not realizing the potential connection to this historical event. Today this Dead Sea clay is renowned for its skin care properties, rich in nutrients and vitamins, which is known by scientists to have come from deep within the earth. Could this clay mentioned in the Quran be the very substance used to bring about the destruction of the people of Prophet Lut in the city of Sodom? Wallahu alam. Wrapping up our unforgettable time at the Dead Sea, we had to rush to the airport as Pablo's journey continued to Portugal. Before we departed, he gave me some tips on how to navigate through Jordan and also the process to travel to Jerusalem as he had just returned. To my friend Pablo, it's been an absolute delight adventuring with you. I wish you all the best on your future travels and I hope we cross paths again somewhere out on the playground. <laughs>